Hey everyone, welcome back. I've been catching up on Genshin lately, and a pile of requests to cover Nodis Prime have built up, so I guess I'll do a quick do-over of one of my Nodis Prime builds today. It's a small variation on previous ones I've showed you, an improvement in my eyes, and has a lot of options and potential. There are more videos coming, as I've got many ideas flying around at the moment, so expect more frequent videos again. This is a scaling Nidus build for Endless Steel Path. Endurance is what most of my builds aim towards, as shorter missions are basically just about more damage and easier energy for spamming. I don't feel those builds are really interesting to make, as they are much more simplistic in nature. Nidus Prime. I don't really know how the lore works for this one, but here we are. He has the typical increased health, armor, energy, and an extra polarity. We've also gained a little bit of orc and aesthetic on the primed maggots. Honestly, the only stat I really notice ever in primes are the energy bonuses, with few exceptions. But even on his prime, you'll see it doesn't make a huge difference. His one, violence, is basically our main source of getting energy back. This is only because of the insane amount of range we're putting on this Nidus build, though. I would not rely entirely on this as your energy source, as this will be our primary method of building mutation stacks for Nidus's undying passive. We will also be doubling up with teeming violence for the free critical chance bonus on primary weapons. Weapons. His 2, Larva, is obviously the bread and butter of the build. It is your main source of CC, another way of getting stacks on kills, grouping enemies up for easy killing, and also lets you cast your 1 through them for even more stacks. Now we take a look at 3, Parasitic Link. When tethered to an enemy, you gain scaling damage reduction up to 90% and transfer damage to the target one hit. This isn't really that useful for endless, but pretty functional for shorter steel path missions. If you aren't moving around too much. The real boon on endless though is it makes you immune to all status, including knockdowns and staggers, but only when attached to enemies. This does make it super useful for solo play, so we want to active whenever possible. When linked to allies, read allied players, because it doesn't work on spectres, defense objectives, of persons or friendly enemies. You instead gain scaling ability strength as a final multiplicative bonus. This is pretty handy in team setups, especially with the massive range we're using, but expect pub allies to not make good use out of this. It is super strong for pre-made teams that are looking to hit specific strength benchmarks on certain setups though, such as team roar or pillage setups, etc. His 4, Ravenous, creates an area that regenerates health and spawns maggots. These maggots actively seek enemies on the infested area and stun them while doing damage over time. Damage scales with mutation stacks accumulated. They can explode either by the ability expiring or casting violence on the affected enemy. Explosion damage also scales with mutation stacks. Exploded maggots this way added to mutation stacks and also stack with violence casts. You can refresh a Ravenous area by recasting while standing on it before it expires, but honestly I'm not that interested interested in his 4. Because the CC it does is better accomplished by his 2, Nidus already has passive healing and other ways to get it, and the long cast time of 1.5 seconds. Its damage is also standalone and lackluster against armor. I'm actually replacing Ravenous with Sickening Pulse today, but there are many options available. You could take Breach, Surge, Eclipse, Roar, Expedite Suffering, there are many options available with this type of high range, high strength setup I'll be using. But this is just what I run. This is because of how Nidus' passive, Undying, works. Whenever you run out of HP, if you have more than 50 mutation stacks available, you will instead gain a HUD indicator of the Undying passive, proccing with a slight zoom effect, lose 15 stacks, regain 50% health, and 5 seconds of invulnerability. The cast time on your 1 is much faster than your 4, and the CC on your 2 is also better than your 4. You can very easily build back up to 15 stacks just by casting your 3 on something, 2 on enemies that quote unquote killed you, and spamming your 1 3 or 4 times. And and you'll even still have a second or two spare afterwards, usually on your invulnerability still. So let's take a closer look at the build. The first thing I want to point out is this build is flexible. It is a high range, high strength Nidus setup. We aren't totally dumping duration because we are running teeming violence to give extra crit chance on our primary weapon. With growing power proc, you get 333.6% extra mod crit chance. 73 duration lets this last for nearly 11 seconds, which is more than enough to move around and use your weapons before your next violence cast. Unfortunately, 73 duration makes your larva last 5 seconds before you can recast it. While this is normally okay, because your larva is your main source of CC, there may be times you want to recast it sooner. There are 5 opted to bring larva burst on this build. On the other hand, this also means you can bring this Nidus on a non-endless steel path mission since you still have that super high range and strength scaling. It could easily shred through corpus when you rush through the map. But keep in mind that's not the main purpose of this build. This build actually has spare slots, which is the reason why I slotted larva burst and also the reason we have 
cutting drift for 280 range. I have not brought prime shift footed or rolling guard because you have no shield gate and thus neither mod helps you from getting one shotted later on. Your 3 also gives you status immunity as well as an 8 prime shift footed meaning you won't have to worry about status procs or knockdowns to start with. Because we are running insane range and the build is intended for steel path, your larva is sure to group up many enemies. Violence refunds one quarter of the cast per enemy hit so as long as you hit 6.5 enemies with it you will fully recover the cost of both larva and virulence. Should be too hard in steel path spawns. Hence I skipped running any efficiency. 188 energy cap is easily enough to sustain two rotations of violence and larva even if you fail to get many enemies the first time. Arcane energize rounds out the energy economy so that one proc will instantly refill our entire bar. This should be pretty reliable with the kill rate and spawn pulls of larva on steel path. The growing power setup works well for the weapons that have a decent amount of base crit chance already for teaming violence. In those cases we pair it with arcane acceleration to boost the fire rate of our chosen primary weapon further. If the weapon has crit chance problems we can instead offer combat discipline as the aura and arcane avenger as the extra arcane. The high kps of enemies and larva will easily proc arcane avenger from all the self damage inflicted through combat discipline but we won't be using that today. Some builds can really appreciate the extra fire rate for quality of life reasons. When you scale further into endless, sickening pulse will become useful on magnifying the viral procs in the larva ball and the status DOTs you can inflict. I'm sure you've seen sickening pulse heat inherit setups already from my or dystopia's videos where it infinitely doubles per cast and resets the proc duration to full. Or how about gas nuke setups with lavosis 4 or electric nuke setups where you apply one massive stack and instantly gain plus 10 stacks with sickening pulse for 10 times more damage. Electric is normally better than gas here because gas is capped to 10 stacks whereas electric isn't, but because our goal is massive DOT sizes, both are very viable. You just need a weapon setup capable of delivering this massive alpha hit. This also makes Viral easier since it will also instantly max out any existing Viral procs at 10 upon casting Sickening Pulse so long as you have one present. As you can tell, this is a very heavily gunned Focus Nidus. So what is our primary of choice today? It's Ambassador. I just really love the way this weapon sounds and looks and have no problems using it on Nidus. Honestly, any high alpha damage weapon with some AoE potential will work extremely well on this setup for endless scaling. High alpha damage means all the damage needs to be done immediately and in a single damage instance. This category includes most of the AoE weapons and launchers, such as Brahma, Zara, Ogres, Tonkor, Envoy, Tetra, etc. But I'm just choosing Ambassador because it works really well on this build actually. So let's take a closer look. This is my pure electric ambassador you may have recalled from the original video. It is essentially built to apply as much electric damage as possible and force a status proc. Unfortunately, ambassador's AoE on the alt fire does not benefit from prime firestorm so I skipped that, but that's perfectly fine because larva groups everything together and clips inside of themselves. On the other hand, this opens up a slot for prime fast hands and combined with the primary merciless, this cuts the alt fire reload down to just 1.4 seconds which is pretty manageable while also sourcing our base damage. You'll notice that this particular build has over 100% status on the alt fire. This is extremely important to guarantee every enemy in the larva ball takes an electric proc. So 10 enemies getting tagged once means everybody arcs on each other once. A shared one dot becomes 10 dot hits from everybody else. And once you add sickening pulse into the picture, well now there's 11 electric procs per enemy each hitting everybody else, or 110 dots hitting everyone. You are bound to have galvanized multi-shot active and you can easily pull over 10 enemies in steel path so expect to see 13 to 14 electric procs per enemy and a ball of 15 to 20 enemies. That's 195 to 280 shared dots per enemy. The prime bane mod also lets you double dip in the proc damage and is pretty important for the build. However outside of endurance it probably isn't necessary in this setup and you can even slot in extra fire rate or magazine size or even more reload. You are still perfectly capable going for the first 2 or 3 hours of survival without the bane in this setup. Vigilante supplies deals with the ammo economy problem, the ambassador as well as a crit bonus. And hunter munitions deals with the occasional heavy axmas gunner. Actually let's take a look at the crit for a second. So we only have 48% crit because of the 16% base crit chance. Critical delay slows the charge time on this build which is why I brought arcane acceleration. Recall teaming violence gives 333.6% mod crit chance with growing power active on this build. That's enough to push ambassador up to 101.4% total crit chance so this loadout does in fact reach both 100% crit and 100% status. And the reason why it is so effective, you get massive electric DOTs that chain and also proc slash to deal with the real pesky units as needed to finish them off. This is the reason why we're running so many dual stat status mods, high voltage, hammer shot and galvanized aptitude. 
What good is an endless build without a primer? This is your generic epitaph ride viral primer I'm bringing today, but honestly I'm gonna skip over this really fast because the only reason I brought it actually was for the secondary dexterity to give my melee an extra 7.5 seconds combo duration. Priming with your pistol can be slow swapping, and this Nautis build doesn't even use vigorous swap, so instead I've opted for an Exodia Contagion primer. This is especially useful because of the melee instant swap, but also because if you do use sickening pulse it will instantly max the viral stacks, so the trade-off of slower viral application to 10 stacks on a melee versus epitaph is completely nullified. You won't really need this unless you're going for level cap though, so let's take a closer look. This is a build focused around applying as many statuses as possible for Galvanize Aptitude on Ambassador, the Gun CO mod. You basically just chuck this contagion into the larva before shooting. But what about the build and these weird ranks? You see, this is to balance the elements equally, so that's much different statuses proc instead of favoriting a few. Prime Fury to make it feel nicer to use, and Lasting Sting to double the duration of any procs we inflict. For this reason I've slotted Weeping Wounds to scale up our status despite the rank 0 mods. On the bright side, this Zaw does surpass 200% status at 12x combo. This is why I've opted for secondary dexterity for the combo duration and drifting contact here as well. This melee has 22.5 seconds combo duration. I'm also opting for Nairmon for Power Spike, which basically guarantees our Contagion Primer will barely decay over time. We don't need Xeneric because Violence and Energize should be more than enough to sustain our energy economy through Larva grouping. If you're doing shorter missions though where you don't need the Contagion Primer or Sickening Pulse, feel free to take Xeneric instead just for the energy safety net. Your pet is whatever, but I'm bringing this Panzer build with generic mods. Viral Quills to spread, well, viral. Martyr to keep me alive? Actually, this is important. So Martyr takes priority over Undying passive, which means you will get health gate for a moment and your Panzer will revert to its larval form and you will not burn your 50 mutation stacks upon reaching 0 HP. Use this moment to your advantage and CC, kill, or get away from your enemies. This can keep you alive in a pinch and keep you from accidentally wasting stacks when you make positional mistakes. It lets you play more aggressive and less wariness on your stacks. Less time rebuilding stacks means more time for DPS, which means more KPS. Rest of the kit is just synth holster mods, radar, fetch, and survivability. Oh yeah, and also Panzer Devolution so that it always comes back. Alright, showtime. Let's try Corrupted Heavy Gunners first. So the basic rotation is just cast Larva, spam your one a few times to get stacks up and proc teaming virulence and shoot them up. Okay, that was pretty decent. Oh, if your stacks are still climbing you want to instantly see where they're at, just switch to your operator and back. It will skip the stack counter animations and instantly set it to the current true value. So let's try that again, but this time we have Galvanize and Merciless stacks active. Well, they instantly died. Such is the way of things, AoE Force Electric Ambassador crits can be pretty lethal like I said. It's doing something like 14,000 per Electric DOT, and there's 20 enemies here so that should be 280,000 Electric DOTs per enemy. We don't even have Viral procs up, or Sickening Pulse cast. Let's swap this to Drakar Manic Bombards, shall we? So the only problem with Drakar Manic Bombards is they're immune to Nautis' Larva CC. I'll have to group them manually with Xenric for this test. I'm gonna have to build up my stacks a bit again, and there we go. So this time, let's try that. Pretend I larva them to the middle, cast my one to stack and proc teaming, I chuck my contagion to prime viral and a bunch of other elements for galvanized aptitude, and shoot my ambassador. Now I cast sickening pulse, which instantly adds 10 electric procs, and maxes my vial procs to 10, and they're dead. Granted, these enemies have weird resistances and lack of ragdoll hitboxes from Larva not working properly. It will be quite a long while before you see this kind of damage fall off and steal path endurance. And remember, I only use Ambassador because I wanted to. You're free to use better options like Brahma, Zara, Tetra, or any of the other AoE launchers with high alpha. They'll all perform better than this, but this setup does work and gives Ambassador a proper place. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Sisters of Parvels and the Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you info first once new war info drops. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.